welcome back. In this video I'll keep working on the rear rim conversion. So where I finished that last time was I did get this rim fitted with a 150 tyre but it's a little bit offset, probably about 8mm to the right. So I pull it apart, uh, this is the main drive out of the rim and this is where I see the opportunity is to do a bit of machining and move that closer to the diff. So. I've been looking for parts with this bike, it's uh, become a little bit difficult, so uh, I have been looking and luck m went my way and I actually found a complete bike. So this is not a 650, this is an XJ750 and I've, the main reason I bought it is because I'm considering using the tank off of this bike because I just like the look of it a bit better, it's more of a teardrop um, and I think it'll finish the bike a bit better. This particular bike is a police model from Australia, so if you look close you'll notice a few um, differences from a standard 750, but as I said the main uh, driver for me to buy this was the tank. So there's the XJ650 tank, it's got more of a square of profile at the rear, and here's the 750. I don't know if it's a direct fit, but I'll give that a go um, at, in a later video. So just getting back to this rim. Uh, I want to do some machining on the diff area, but I'm just drilling a hole here. This is not the swing arm on the 650, this is the 750. Uh, it's really just a parts bike. Drilling it to see how close the drive shaft is and how much play I might have there to mess about with. So it's only a couple of mils, very close. Uh, in the next video, I'll probably move the swing arm, just see if I can move it to the left uh, just by a millimeter or two. Now I pulled this apart because the police bike has a few differences. The profile of the diff looks a bit different externally, so I thought I'd pull it apart and just check. I have no idea why it's different on the outside because the gear, the ratios, everything is identical internally. Um, so I put this back together, but what I did do is use that seal and face plate because it was in much better condition. So just putting the main rim drive in the lathe, uh, just holding it internally. So I just take light cuts. Now what I'm doing here is I'm gonna face this off a little bit, probably about a mil, one and a half mil, to allow that to move deeper into the diff. So I take it, as I say, about a mil or a mil and a half off of this face, and then I actually machine a little bit of the rear end of that face as well. Um, so there it is there, it's not much, but you know, every millimeter counts. So I'm just subtly removing a bit of metal here and there. So you can see at the back I cut about half a mil off and at the front just uh, a little bit proud of the bearing face. So that bit's done and uh, out of that little exercise I think I've probably gained one and a half mil in the offset and I'm looking for about, I think it's six or seven mil total. Um, so after this what I do is, here's the gear, I've taped it up because there's a main bearing there that I really don't want to have to press off because I might damage it. You can see this fitting in here and it, it hits against that face. So obviously what I'm trying to do now is machine this back so it allows that to go in deeper. Now this probably doesn't look right to most people with sparks coming off. Uh, the reason that's happening is that is a hardened face and it's just how it is when you machine hardened steel, uh, you get a few sparks flying, so no biggie, but I machine off probably, I'd say a good three mil off of that, and then I put a chamfer back on it, so the seals fit in properly, and three mil on that gear, one and a half on the other one, I think this is going to allow me to move that wheel over probably four to five mil, which should be getting pretty close, so uh, few sparks flying here, something a bit different. Even with coolant you still get sparks because it's just so hard. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do this with a high speed tip, so carbide does the job. Blowing it down after I took the tape off, make sure there's no swarf in there. I put this gear back together and um, as I say it's identical to the uh, XJ750 if anyone's interested. You can see the machining there, probably doesn't look much different, but uh, there is, as I say, three or four mil taken off of that. Again, here it's fitted. It's a bit hard to tell in this photo. 
or video, but it is actually uh, allowing that to go much deeper in. So I put this drive back in the rim. Now here it is, fitted into the bike on the diff, and then I put the rim in, and I'm doing a try here. Now I don't have the, the dust guard on the rim, so I need to check that because it's moved over a bit. Hopefully that doesn't foul. But I'm just putting this in here. I couldn't really go much more than this because otherwise the tire would start hitting on the swing arm. So at this point, um, you can see here it's almost centralized. I'd say I just need another millimeter or two. So I'm gonna to try to get that by moving the swing arm to the left in the next video. But the tire still misses here, but it is getting to a point where I don't wanna go much closer than that. So stay tuned in the next video, I'll try to finish off the uh, centralizing of this rim.